Le mai, tenenum orum Ruth Kegengel. Hello, my name is Ruth Kegengel and I'm the Manx Language Development Officer for the cultural organisation Culture Bannon on the Isle of Man. My role focuses on adult language tuition and the promotion and advocacy of the language in the community. The adult language tuition over the past 15 years has had a strong emphasis on spoken language and on direct methods of teaching. I'm delighted to be delivering a talk written by myself and drawing on work by the Director of Culture Bannon, Dr. Brescia Madrill, for Ulster Scotch Leave Week 2020. For those who don't know, the Isle of Man, which is also known as Man, Manim, or Alan Bannon, lies in the middle of the Irish Sea, almost equidistant from the coasts of England, Ireland and Scotland. It measures 33 miles wide, uh, long by 12 miles wide at its broadest point, and the last census in 2016 shows that we had just short of 84,000 residents. When most people think of the Isle of Man first, it's often they think about the TT motorbike races or our tailless Manx cats or perhaps our ancient breed of four horned sheep called the Locktons. Of course, there's much more to our island than this. In many ways, the Manx language is one of the island's success stories, both nationally and internationally. The Manx language is indigenous to the Isle of Man and its very structure holds the story of our island. Although small in terms of number of speakers, its impact on worldwide efforts to protect and promote endangered languages is huge. We are delighted that the Isle of Man is now looked to by many as an example of best practice. But how did we get to this point and was it always this way? Over the course of this talk, you will see that it's as a result of well-organised community-based initiatives, coupled with targeted Isle of Man government support, that the language has seen an upsurge of interest in recent years. The Manx language is now available for all ages to enjoy within nurseries, schools, adult classes and the wider community. It's also a unique identifier for the business community and for the Isle of Man as a whole. I'll start by giving you a brief history of the Manx language, its origins and some of the key points of its long and interesting journey over the years before moving to focus on the importance of Manx language songs within the context of accessibility, language acquisition and developing public support and loyalty for Manx through this engaging medium. A common myth that you may have heard is that Manx was extinct or came back from the dead. This was not and never has been true. Ned Madrill, who died in 1974, is known as the last native speaker of what can be described as traditional Manx. But others had learnt the language and, importantly, they'd learned from native speakers, thus maintaining a continuity of spoken tradition. Our phoenix-like story gives hope to small language communities around the world. As you'll be probably aware, Manx is one of six Celtic languages and belongs to the Goidelic branch. But a Brythonic language was spoken here before Gaelic. We can see evidence of this from Ogham inscriptions on crosses. Although the names on the stones are Irish, the form in which they are recorded shows Brythonic influence. However, in about 500 AD, Gaelic came to the island, we think probably with Irish invaders, and now Old Irish is attributed to be the ultimate parent of the modern Manx language. Gaelic culture on the island first came under threat in the Scandinavian period, around 800 AD, when the Isle of Man was conquered and colonised by the Vikings for over 400 years. Place names such as Snaefell, which means snow mountain, and Tinwald, the oldest con con continuous parliament in the world, show these influences. For the most part, however, Gaelic strongly and quickly reasserted itself in the Isle of Man to such an extent that very few words of Norse origin can actually be found in modern Manx. In the 13th and 14th centuries, the island underwent a period of political turbulence with both Scotland and England jostling for its ownership. England took the island in 1346, and although we know very little about the English influence on the island and its language before the Reformation, we certainly know that in the mid-1700s, Manx was still the language of the majority of the population. At that point in time, the language flowered, primarily due to the influence of the church. St Matthew's Gospel was published in Manx in 1748, followed by the complete Holy Bible and Bible Kajarik 
in 1775. We also have texts for a great body of original and uniquely Manx works dating to the 18th century. Known as carvels, these vernacular songs were sung on a variety of religious themes, usually performed around Christmas, and around 150 were collected. Half of these were later published in 1891 by A.W. Moore. The carvels lasted as a living tradition into the early 19th century. In this period are also the narrative ballads, Bears Ilium Dawn, and the Kiri Phony Acta, which date to around 1700 and which is still sung today. And in 1796, the Reverend Thomas Christian published an abridged version of Paradise Lost, translated into Manx and in rhyming couplets. This, along with the aforementioned songs, are important texts independent of the Bible. Before the mid 18th century, most Manx people didn't need the English language and there was little incentive for those outside the island to settle in Man. The Revestment Act of 1765 changed all of this. The economy collapsed and there were periods of emigration of Manx people, mainly to America. There was all also immigration of people from the northwest of England into the island from around the end of the 1790s into the early 1800s. 19th century mass tourism also made it essential to be able to speak English. English was perceived as the sole medium for gaining advancement. By the early 19th century, a deep-rooted negative attitude had been developed towards the Manx language. Luckily, the 19th century also saw increased efforts to study and preserve Manx. A rediscovery of old texts saw the publication of Manx dictionaries and other books, concerning the history, language and culture through work by the Manx Society and others. By the end of the 19th century, in Cheshire Gilgath, the Manx Language Society had been founded. The founding of this organisation marks the start of a dedicated community effort to support and revive the Manx language. They made an early attempt for Manx to be taught in schools and created phonograph recordings in 1904, sadly, many of which have not survived along with publishing books and holding language classes. The organisation also helped to secure the future of Manx by teaching Manx sentiment, which is what we would now think of as Manx cultural identity. In Cheshire Gilgath is still alive over and active over 120 years later. There were many other scholars, both professional and non-professional, at the end of the 1800s and the start of the 1900s who made huge contributions in bringing Manx to the attention of the public and within academic circles. This includes the collection and publication of songs, which I will discuss shortly. It was the visit of a sound recording unit from the Irish Folklore Commission in the late 1940s that had perhaps the greatest impact capturing traditional native speakers before they disappeared. This came about as a result of an official visit to the island by Eamon de Valera, the Taoiseach as, at the time. These recordings can be found commercially in a book called Skeelan Vannan, or Stories of Man, now available online on YouTube, published by Manx National Heritage. Further fieldwork to supplement the collection was carried out in the 1950s by a group of language activists here on the island. The group used and spoke Manx as a living language, but paid great attention at the same time to the Manx of the native speakers. It's worth stressing that all of this work that was carried out by these passionate language activists was done so voluntary and, vol voluntarily, and so we grow owe them a great amount. The contribution of Douglas Farragher from the 1950s onwards was pivotal and must be referenced. He not only organised adult languages in Manx, adult classes in Manx, sorry, but also published booklets in Manx and, um, on, and on Manx and was an effective publicist for the language, language when many others decried it. He published a comprehensive English Manx dictionary in 1979 with government support. From the 1960s, there was growing interest in the Manx language and this flourished under the help of a number of committed people. You'll note the importance of the grassroots movement in the revitalisation of Manx. Government support for the Manx language did not really emerge until later in the, in the 20th century. In 1982, in response to a Tinwall petition to create the Manx Heritage Foundation, which is now called Trevannan, to support cultural heritage, including the language, 
and in 1985 to produce the report of the Select Committee on the Greater Use of Manx Gaelic. An island-wide survey revealed that there was demand from the population for Manx language teaching in mainstream schools, which was introduced in 19, from 1992 under the first Manx language officer, Dr Brian Stoll. After this came the establishment of the Mundjaberga preschool movement, inspired by preschool movements in Scotland in particular, which in turn developed and ran the first Manx medium immersion school, Bunskol Gilgach. The Bunskol Gilgach is now well established and under the wing of the Department of Education, Sport and Culture with around 80 pupils. The department's Manx language service teaches Manx to over 1,000 children to, across all schools in the Isle of Man. And with more adults learning Manx too, we are seeing an increased use of the language in a wide variety of contexts. The success of the Manx language attracts international interest and helps us articulate our island story in new and innovative ways. The presence, within Man uh, within, the presence of Manx within education is undoubtedly important and it's undeniable that the language has seen an upsurge of interest in recent years. When I think of my own route into the Manx language, however, it wasn't from the traditional method of class-based education, but through song. I first started learning Manx when I was in my early 20s. Um, I was living away from home, studying at universities in England, and I keenly was aware of just how special my island was and was filled with a longing to connect more deeply with it. As a musician and singer, the most obvious way for me to do this was to get even more involved in the Manx cultural scene and to actively learn the Gaelic language songs that I'd grown up hearing. Song texts are incredibly important to the Manx language, perhaps more so than songs are to other minority or lesser used languages, because we don't have the luxury of an extensive written literary tradition, as in Ireland or in Scotland, for example. Our earliest text, dated on internal evidence to the beginning of the 16th century, is the traditionary or Mananan ballad, a text which runs through the history of the island and which has only recently been set to music. So here we often look to song texts to tell us about the development of a language, history and culture, to learn of success and disaster at sea, the fate of lost and dead sheep, and of course, the terrible treatment of men by heartless women. And yes, the informants were predominantly men. The Manx Gaelic song corpus that we have inherited comes in the main from 19th and early 20th century collections made or shared by A.W. Moore, Dr. John Clegg and the Gill brothers, Annie Gilchrist and Mona Douglas, amongst others. And songs continue to be important to the Manx Gaelic canon and are constantly being composed. Some new songs from the late 1990s can be found in Carswell's anthology of Manx literature, Mananan's Cloak including the popular Iri Nagrania, meaning sunrise, which has now been recorded several times. I'd like to move to discuss how we promote and teach Manx song and how that is supported by Irish and Scottish traditions. I'll be looking at late 20th and early 21st century educational use, an examination that will include newly composed texts. After a brief introduction to the Manx collections, I'll touch on three key areas the role of festivals in promoting inter-Gaelic and inter-Celtic connections and in encouraging new songs in the tradition. The Roy McGeeat app, which was in, um, developed in 20, 2013, which stems from a book um, which was developed in 2002. Uh, two. And thirdly, Gawain, which um, is an educational resource from 2008, a book and CD produced specifically for school use. The most striking thing about the surviving collections of Manx songs is their bias. It would be naive to think that we're alone in this. Each collector has their own agenda, their own set of opportunities and limitations. What's perhaps peculiar to the Isle of Man is the split between those who felt the language was key and those who felt the pressure to note, note the notate the melodies that they found. Whilst we're incredibly lucky to have anything written down or recorded, it's hard not to feel ever so slightly resentful towards A.W. Moore for having so painstakingly conducted the song texts while not really including many tunes, and for those that he did to not really very match up very well with the words. It's frustrating that the apparent rival collecting activities of Dr. Clegg and the Gill brothers focus so heavily on tunes when Clegg was a fluent Manx speaker and they were collecting from known singers. 
you can hear the songs and the melodies captured, but what remains only is a fragment. You can have to imagine the rest. At the beginning of the 20th century, language activists identified the need to teach young people, a development that meant the focus naturally moved to songs. They were not only accessible, but easily performed and enjoyed by audiences. Sophia Morrison and others in Cheshire Gilgak com successfully campaigned for the inclusion of a Manx song class in the Manx Music Festival, with a prize sponsored by the Language Society. Around the 1920s and 1930s, and further motivated by the te need to teach her youth movement, Erglach Bannon, Mona Douglas's collecting activities started to focus on music and words together. Douglas was keen to project Manx song internationally, to be able to project, present herself and her young singers in a credible way within a Gaelic and Celtic context. A major feature of the revival of Manx traditional music and dance has been the participation in inter-Celtic gatherings from early pan-Celtic festivals to those still active today, such as the Celtic Congress and Pan-Celtic Festival, as well as the development of our own inter-Celtic events. In the Isle of Man and Cruniacht, the gathering is perhaps the most notable of these. Established in the 1970s, in the late 1970s by Mona Douglas, it has provided a major focus for the performance of Manx culture. Twinned with the Oroctus and the Eisteddfod, and is established as the National Celtic Festival in the Isle of Man. As part of Incrunyuk's festival, there were a number of open or adult competitions which ran until around 2008 and included solo or group songs in Manx, as well as a class for new songs in the language. Over the past 20 years, Incrunyuk has been complemented by sister festivals on each side, a youth festival at Easter called Shenakus Jew, which centres around Ramsey dance group Nafaini, and Failure Gilgak, or the Koosh, a Manx language festival based in different parts of the island. Phil Gorn's idea for a Failure Gilgak stemmed from his role as Ingrenida, the Manx language development officer at Manx Heritage Foundation, which is now called Bannon. As is so often the case, songs and the language in general had become the poor relation at pub sessions at other festivals and needed a new space. In 2000, Dr. Brisha Madrill introduced the Ren and Noor, or New Songs, workshop event at Fela Gilgach. The idea was to encourage people to sing recently composed songs and to share brand new songs. Just like, just like the Incrunyukt competitions, which have since gone out of fashion, the workshop gave people a focus, something to aim for. If you weren't content with writing songs for your own amusement or for a specific soloist, band or choir, what was the motivation for producing and, most importantly, sharing new material? Out of that first session came songs that had been written in the late 20th century and hardly performed, and brand new songs that had been since arranged and recorded by choirs and groups. Many of these songs were published in the Cheol and Tiam series, which has been initiated by Colin Jerry. Brescia collected and edited volumes three and four and continued the principle of publishing Manx Gaelic song texts with their melodies and without translations into English. Colin Jerry notes in the first two volumes that one of the, the motivations for him to learn Manx was that he was wanting to sing songs and that he would not want to deny anyone that opportunity. The idea of new songs also extended to the visiting performers at the festival, including the wonderful Margaret Bennett from Scotland. Her new songs were songs that were new to us. Margaret and other singers that we've been lucky enough to have as performing performers and workshop lead, leaders had to find songs that were easy to present, that were encouraging to the non-native speaker of Irish or Scottish Gaelic. The most successful songs were quite often the children's songs or those with repetitive lyrics or and or maladies. Margaret Bennett so successfully taught the song Sound Mila that it was later recorded by a Manx band. We should also mention the Pan-Celtic Song Contest and indeed the competition for a new song in a traditional style. The Manx entries for these are chosen at the Aren Son Manon competition, which means song for man or the Isle of Man, which is organised by Fiona McArdle and it has done much to encourage new composition, as well as established singer-songwriters trying their hand at singing in Manx Gaelic for the first time, something which may seem surprising, but something also replicated in Cornwall. 
where they use it as an opportunity to encourage singing in Cornish. Festivals expose Manx singers tra to traditional singing in other Celtic languages and stimulate Manx soloists and groups to attend festivals in other countries. This sense of exchange and support is and has been crucial. Festivals also encourage performance and performance often leads to recording. Of most interest in terms of inter-Gaelic crossover and support are Skeel, who sang in Scottish Gaelic and in Manx, an approach reinforced in part by participation in the Column Killer in initiative and my own work as a solo artist. My inter-Gaelic connections at Lorient and through the recording of solo albums at Watercolour Studios in Scotland led me to an Chinya project with Marianne Kennedy and Owen O'Canowan from um, Scotland and Ireland respectively. I'll now move to talk about two key printed resources which have helped to make Manx Gaelic song more accessible and which have helped embed the language. Roy McGeeart, meaning run around or run about, first appeared as a book and CD in around 2002, here it is, published by the Manx preschool movement Munjaberga, which means little people. Roy McGeeart was created in response to there being a clear need for new early years material, appropriate for second language acquisition. And it was authored by Annie Kizik, the former deputy head of the Manx language medium primary school here on the island, the Bunskol Gilgach. Annie has been active in Manx cultural circles since she was a child and was a member of Mona Douglas's youth movement, Erglach Bannon. Consequently, as well as being brought up in the tradition, she also has a wide network of inter-Celtic friendships and contacts who pointed her in the direction of interesting and appropriate material and who have been generous in allowing translations into Manx to be made. We must credit the generosity of those working with Gaelic languages who have supported all that has been achieved in Manon. There was a great deal of thought about how the song should be sung on the CD that accompanies this book. The product is designed for people to be able to use it at home and so friendly, non-professional voices are used and it's accessible in style with simple piano or guitar backing, encouraging people to join in or sing the songs for themselves. Six of the songs in the book were direct translations of Irish songs or were inspired by them, whereas other songs such as Tammy Gaiman on Smeglation, peep, peep, peep were um, taken and um, from well-known melodies such as she'll be coming round the mountain, ten green bottles and here we go Looby Loo, immediately familiar and recognisable and in providing another encouraging way in for families new to the Manx language. Alongside the music being enticing and accessible in st style, the language content is excellent and there are songs to support children's daily routine, for example, Mara my kiss tal, which is a welcome song used to start the day. Uch, 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 tamalawan fluch, which is used when washing hands, talking about hands being wet. And tredugal de valia, which is a time to go home song. And children can use it to, to just remember things like um, their coat and making sure they're going to the door. So it's reinforcing the different um, parts of the going home process. Repeated lyrics within songs and referencing between songs, phrases like Tammy Ski, which means I am tired, along with movement and actions are very important. This is about language acquisition and about engaging small children. Songs like Uch, 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 Tamalau and Fluch are designed to practice the Uch sound in Manx. The book, CD and manuscript music for the songs prove popular and accessible with the target audience of parents, Manx language learners, and those interested in Manx music. Annie offered her time to teachers at other schools who needed to build more confidence in delivering songs as part of their curriculum. Many teachers throughout the island do use these songs, in particular, the aforementioned welcome and home time songs. Roy McGeer was given the opportunity to develop new audiences when it was developed as a free app by Adrian Kane, the former Manx Language Development Officer for Culture Bannon. In October 2013, he was motivated as a parent, but also as a development officer who had seen the success of other language apps. He set to work with an animator to make a simple and fun app that would be self-guided introduction to the material. The simplicity of the animations taken from the lovely illustrations in this book made the app cheaper to produce 
But as Annie notes, the simplicity is important so the songs themselves remain the main focus and shine through. The app's a huge boost for the Manx language resources. It looks professional, it's easily shared, and it doesn't need to be reproduced physically. The technology also enables parents or class leaders who lack confidence in their vocal ability to use high quality songs. Annie Kizik says that the app makes the 1950s style of the book meet the 21st century. Parents of children attending Munjaberga or the Bunskol Gilgach seem to know about it before they arrive, so the book and the songs prove a good icebreaker for new pupils at the school. The second resource in book and CD form complement Roy McGeeat almost by accident. Gawain or Join In is a resource book and CD for schools for key stage one and two, that's ages five to 11. It was produced by my colleague, Dr. Chloe Woolley for the Manx Heritage Foundation, as I mentioned now, Culture Bannon, and features 45 songs, dances and listening activities with tin whistle fingering charts, descriptions of dance steps, ideas for further reading and resources. All songs, tunes and dances in here are related to the Isle of Man in some way, whether that might be because they came from some of our established collections or because the song lyrics mention the island. Some songs have been published from manuscripts collections for the first time. Chloe is the Manx Music Development Officer and she has a PhD in the revival of traditional Manx music, so she's someone well placed to develop meaningful educational resources which have a good sense of context in terms of the tradition. A CD accompanies this book and includes pronunciation guides for songs in the language and development officers made themselves available to teachers to support delivery and build confidence where necessary. There is a mis mixture of traditional and contemporary songs in English and in Manx. Gawain is also now a page on the school's wiki a web resource, which means that it, it's instantly accessible by schools and others without having to rely on a printed book or CD. It also makes it easier to project in the classroom and to share backing tracks and other sound files, giving confidence to teachers, even if they don't consider themselves particularly musical. Gawain is the go-to resource for the Manx Folk Awards, a reimagining of the Trunnacht Egg competitions, which were set up by Mona Douglas. The Manx Folk Awards emphasise participation and inclusion and attract schools that have a long history of performing Manx traditional music, song and dance, and those who are much newer to it. Each year around 1,200 children participate. There is an openness to the Manx Gaelic song tradition. This is in part due to the fragmentary nature of the collections, but also because of the break in the oral tradition. With the lack of tradition bearers and the separation of text and music for so long, Manx Gaelic's song openly invites creativity. If we want songs to be sung, for the tradition to be vibrant, we have to embrace this, tr this creativity, knowing that it encourages new singers to access old songs, songs that include old and new elements, as well as those that are more recently composed. This openness also extends to the communal way in which Manx song is approached at pub sessions and the like. There is a real emphasis on participatory singing, partly thanks to the friendliness and openness of Manx Gaelic choirs like Kujin Kujik and Clogari Tui. We shouldn't forget the importance of access, the importance of encouraging people to sing songs. It doesn't matter when or where or how people access tr the tradition. If it's through more recently composed songs, or for language acquisition purposes alone, people still become connected to the tradition, whether as an audience member for concerts or as consumers of recordings or as active singers themselves. Newly composed songs coming from those already steeped in the tradition and good traditional sing singers themselves, such as Annie Kizik or Bob Carswell, cross-reference older material linguistically and musically in the new works, ensuring that the net becomes wider and fuller, not narrower, narrower and emptier. Within a community and nation where print culture is not well established, the internet and free apps become exciting and liberating means of transmission, ensuring equity of access to professionally produced material. They bring confidence to learners, to become part of the song community, to have confidence to access other parts of it.
and with more people singing, the future is bright. Gurumayu.